do so. Uh, secondly, I'd like to make a clarification in the paper, the uh, local paper, there was a statement that the select board set that forth some limit. The select board did not set that forth some limit, the state did. Uh, it came down originally as a zero road limit, and, uh, and we can, had concerns and they raised it for time. Other than that, this is a presentation by Sean and Toil and Tanner, and I would suspect you want to wait till the end for questions, or? Yeah, that'd probably be easier. Wait till the end of the presentation and questions at the end. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Sean James from Boyle Tanner Associates. Uh, with me tonight is Chris Dunlap, who's a senior transportation engineer, and Kimberly Peace, our environmental coordinator, and they'll be speaking uh, a little bit later on the project. So, we came here, not all that long ago, but had a local concerns meeting, basically to kick off the project and, and get, get some input from the town on, on the Green River Crook Bridge. So, we're back here tonight We've gone a little further and we have a little more detail on some of the alternatives we talked about. So the main purpose of the meeting tonight is to talk about some of the alternatives, what we found, and then at the end, any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, deal with those then. So the beginning, I'm going to start at the beginning, turn it over to Kimberly. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the need, the scope of the study. If you are here at the last presentation, it's, it's uh, a lot, some of the same material. She's going to talk about the resource constraints and explain what those are, what we have to deal with on any, any type of crossing, whether it's new or existing. Chris is going to talk in detail about some of the alternatives we, we looked at. And then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about funding, wrap it up, and, and answer any questions. So purpose need, and again, I'm going to go through the beginning just a little quickly because we, we've covered it. And I see a lot of familiar faces, so I know you've heard this before. So, Purposes we're looking to study vehicular crossings near the Green River Covered Bridge or at the bridge. And some of the goals or the need was an unposted either for weight or height uh, river crossing uh, to access or to serve the, the properties on the west side of the Green River. And as you know, there's a fairly long detour about it. So that's the, the need of the, the project. So how do we look at the, the sites? How do we pick what we're going to talk about tonight? We started with a uh, the town provided a scope of work which set some of the, the limitations, which we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, again, we, tried, we, we need to narrow the focus of what we're going to look at. We looked at the goals of the town and the, the lay of the town plan from 2010. Uh, did some map review, uh, site visits. We had our, the meeting I mentioned before, the local concerns meeting. And then also we had to be cognizant of cost and constructability of whatever we looked at. So the scope is within a half mile radius with the Green River Covered Bridge at the center. And as we mentioned, there's, we, we ended up looking at two alignments to the north, three to the south, and then several options right at the Green River Covered Bridge. So these are the northerly alignments, and Chris is going to talk about these in a lot more detail, but just sort of to get you oriented, um, north is facing to the, uh, to the right of the screen here. A takes use of an existing bridge with a new road. B is a new bridge and new road. So these are both north of the covered bridge. And the idea or the thought behind these with the selection for alternative A is A is within our study limits at half, half mile radius. It uses an existing bridge. So one of the, the largest component of these projects or these alternatives is the bridge component. And here you have an existing bridge for that alternative. B gives you a shorter roadway, but it requires a new bridge and actually be a fairly expensive bridge, which, which Chris will touch on. So those are north of the covered bridge. Now south, there were three alternatives. Um, basically coming in on this, the conservation land, which is uh, somewhere where the, some of the crossings are being done now. Uh, one just a little bit north of that, calling C, so C, D, and E. And then F is the covered bridge right here. So those, those again, Chris is going to talk about in some detail. And, and why these locations? Well, D and E has existing access from Stage Road. It's already there. Uh, the, the road construction cost is fairly low. There's no clearing. Uh, C, the other one, it's similar to that, but there's there aren't the issues with the uh, conservation. 
So that's, that's sort of a quick overview of where we were last time um, and, and the different alternatives we looked at. So what, what we're going to do now is turn over to uh, Kimberly Peace. She's our environmental coordinator. Uh, she deals with all our environmental regulations, NEPA regulations, all the things that I don't do. And she knows very well. So I'm going to turn it over to her to talk about some of these uh, resource constraints. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody. So resource constraints. What are the resources that are in the area? The resources are the parts of the natural and human environment that we're going to affect. Um, one of the things that we looked at for this study, we, we looked at your town plan, and we can see what you really value and hold important to it. And, and we understand that those environmental resources and those historic resources are some things that you don't want to have impacts to without necessary needs. So that's part of our analysis and, and reviewing all of this and why we're, we're taking a close look at these. So anytime you have resource impacts, you're going to have a permit requirement, um, and that adds a cost. Uh, for some of the cases that we'll discuss, anytime you have a permit, you typically have mitigation. Mitigation also has costs associated with it and challenges. So these are why we can consider them constraints. So some of these resources when you, and alternatives, when you look at them, we're going to have uh, permitting processes that can be lengthy or costly. And so we use that as a type of comparison. So we started with review of online listings, some various data sets, mapping, Excellent. Just a quick overview of the resources that we've looked at. Uh, Vermont Area Agency of Natural Resources has what's called Atlas, and that has a lot of map layers in it that identify wetlands, floodplains, um, soils. And we also looked at the town of Guilford data, the state and national register database for historic and archaeological properties and impacts. Online tools, we also looked at U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, that's your list of state, federally endangered species. Uh, which there aren't any within the project area that we reviewed. NRCS, that's Natural Resource Conservation Service, that's your soil mapping. FEMA is Federal Emergency Management, that's uh, contains your floodplain mapping. And then NWI, our National Wetland Inventory. So that, as well as the Vermont wetland categories on the atlas, gives us a kind of double layering of making sure we capture enough of the wetlands. We did do some limited field review, as they talked about. <laughs> With any of these online tools, we do, in some cases, have mapping uncertainties because this is a big picture look. We're looking at some of the natural resource layers in Atlas are a little uh, questionable, and we've been re researching that. Uh, we were informed that the well points that you'll see later on one of the maps are actually identified by Latin longs for where they're installed. So those would have to be field reviewed. And we also had some questions about the widths of the floodplains. And we were told that, again, that's another resource that is sort of a combination of digitizing some FEMA maps. You'll see those on the maps later. They do tend to creep up the hill a little bit more than we had expected. So all of this is, is looking at these tools as, as close as we can get, with the understanding that there's always some margin of error. What we identified is probably no surprise to all of you. We have the floodplains of the Green River. Wetlands and floatable soils are also within the area. We have conservation and managed lands. I'm sure most of you are aware of the parcel that uh, has a conservation easement on it by Vermont Land Trust. We also have some protected soils. Those are soils that are prime agricultural and statewide importance soils that would have to have a permit associated with those impacts. We have some private wells out there within the resource area. We also have some protected wildlife habitat. The conservation parcel has been managed for certain types of wildlife, and that is associated with a wildlife habitat improvement program and a grant. So we have to take and identify that and make sure that we're understanding of that. We also identified there's the State Historic District and some listed properties, as well as the bridge itself on the National Register of Historic Places. And the bridge as well um, for the alternative A to the north, that the bridge was built in 1929. Thank you. So that would also be pr probably eligible for listing on the National Register. So when we identified our alternatives and we boiled it down to what would be actually be impacted, <coughs> these are our constraints. What would we have to overcome in terms of challenges? Wetlands, floodplains, and protected soils. For almost all of the alternatives, we would have challenges with these impacts, and they would require a permit or mitigation. So we rolled that into our estimates of cost and estimates of how long the project would take to, to be permitted. 
Private wells should and most probably could be avoided. There's a 25 foot buffer around those resources, so we have enough wiggle room for the alternatives to be able to avoid those. The conserved land and the wildlife habitat have protection. That conservation has permanent protection on it that would prevent that from being developed. Not an impossibility, but pretty far fetched. So, and then we have impacts, to, potential impacts to the state and national register properties. How we would explain to the resource agencies the effects that would be for the local houses in the area, how they would be affected, as well as the protected bridges. <coughs> Again, we're talking about floodplains and special flood hazard areas that we've identified by FEMA. So this is boiling it down a little bit more into who we'd have to coordinate with and discuss with. Any of these alternatives would require a stream alteration permit, depending on the, the length and the amount of the impacts to the actual river itself. Could be very small, could be a little bit bigger for each of the alternatives. The state and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which is the federal agency that regulates wetlands, Projects that would impact a wetland would need a permit from both of these agencies. NRCS is the Farmland Protection Policy Act, as I said, in the protected soils, which are unique and prime and state farmland important soils, those have to be, they run through a permitting process, and we would have to devise a way to mitigate for those if that was required. Uh, the NRCS Wildlife Habitat Incentive Program, there would have to be discussions with that agency if there's uh, wildlife impact, habitat impacts were to take place. And then, of course, there's the National Historic Preservation Act, so there would have to be coordination with the state and federal agencies regard to any impacts to historic resources. So I'm going to turn this over now to Chris, who's our senior transportation engineer, who's going to go into some of the design criteria. Thank you, Kim. All right, so what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to talk about the design criteria of the roadway, and I'm going to end up going through um, the map of each of the alternatives, which shows you the, the impacts that Kimberly just discussed. And you can see, um, you know, we can, you can see how much impact on each of those um, alternatives. So our design criteria are based on federal and state standards, and we actually reviewed the, the town uh, standards also to make sure they were in compliance with the state and federal standards. So based on the, the average annual traffic, daily traffic, and the design speed, we used a roadway width of 28 feet. That would be two, two 11 foot lanes and two three foot shoulders. And, and based on our design and, and to determine cost, we used a gravel roadway surface similar to what you have out there today. Our bridge uh, criteria is based on, for the local criteria for, for bridges is uh, 225. And what is 225? Is, is actual um, a storm event that happens every once every 25 years. So that's a 225. And for the local uh, for the local roadways, we need to be one foot above that. But for federal purposes, state purposes, we need to be above the floodplain. And the floodplain is actually a 100 year storm event. So once in every 100 years, you know, we have to be above. And we use it for these, this purpose, we use one foot above the floodplain elevations. So the bridge width, similar to the roadway, uh, two 11 foot lanes, uh, two three foot shoulders, and the bridge requires bridge curve, which is a foot and a half on each side. So that would be a total bridge width of 21, uh, 31 feet. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, alternatives um, C, D, and E first, mainly because they, they have more resource impacts. Uh, so I just want to go through these first, and then I'll go back to A and B, and we can talk about those after. But again, just quickly, uh, C, D, and E have wet, wetlands and floodplain present. Uh, the new bridge and roadway, because of the, the floodplain and having to be one foot above the 100-year floodplain, would require we need to stay out of the, the floodplain areas, or or we require mitigation. So these alternatives require long bridges in order to avoid them. You'll see this when I get to the next slide. And I'll show you the, the lands. Obviously, we talked about the conservation land. There's agricultural lands um, that we have to take into consideration, well point locations. And all these alternatives, no matter which one we're talking about, all require a partial property taking. This is just a picture of alternative C. Basically, what I was trying to capture with this picture is, is, is wetlands back there. And you'll see um, in, in one of the 
the next slide is the, the one in the area that we're talking about. But this is the one stage road looking into where we were looking at starting the line C. Uh, again, alignment e, D and E would, uh, the alignment itself, I mean, we're trying to follow the, the existing farm road that's out there, but based on the design criteria, it looks at, you know, like we would have to be more into the field than what we were initially showing. So, but this shows the entrance of D and E, and this is an um, existing crossing on E that's, um, you know, that I believe some trucks are using today, but to get that for the fields. All right, so this, this picture here is a uh, line of C, D, and E, but this is the 100 year floodplain that we were discussing. And as you can see, you know, it, it, a significant, we, the bridge would have to be constructed over the floodplain and we have to stay out of it. In order to be above the floodplain by one foot, we'd have to reconstruct uh, Green River Road. It was, we'd probably be about six feet above River Road at this location. So River Road, uh, Green River Road would have to be reconstructed and that would just be additional wet, uh, floodplain impacts. Um, and that, that's the same for the, similarly to C, uh, D, and E also. So that's the, this is the floodplain. Now, alignment C, this, this blue area, these blue areas here are all wetland areas. Um, and with the, the orange stripes are the floodable soils. Uh, the, the wetlands themselves would require uh, weather mitigation in some sort, in, in probably a general permit in order to get that permit. So but you can see a significant impact from line C for the weather. The actual numbers where it says 299 plus zero. Can you just say for clarification what those numbers are? I'm sorry, yeah, you know what, that's a good point. Uh, what we do when we uh, design roadways is we, we call it stationing. So like you see station 500 here, 502, 505, 507, 50. These are 100 foot stations. So this is 500. 5.00, and so 250 feet away is 502.50, and this is 500 feet. So you can see we're about 400 feet crossing of the floodable soils in this case. On the previous slide, I'll even go back to the side. You can see that, you know, we would have to stay out of the floodplain. You know, we could probably realign it, but again, you know, we'd be in the conservation thing. But you're talking about four, five, six hundred feet of bridge in order to cross these floodplains. You know, similarly here, it's about three hundred feet right. on a line of sea. Where's the village right now? Where's the cover bridge? Uh, the I'm sorry, it was right there. Yeah. Yes, this uh, alternative F, which Sean will talk about a little bit later, is um, where the covered bridge is. In this thing. So this is Green River Road, Stage Road. You know, this is the big field here. Okay, we discuss the wetland. Uh, Obviously, the conservation land, all the uh, C and D and E cross through the conservation land, which Kim we mentioned earlier. These are uh, agricultural soils, prime and state. This would just require additional permitting. Kim we mentioned the well point locations. We need to avoid these when we design them for the layouts. Um, so that's what we've done. You'll see on A and B that we've had to actually uh, change the alignments a little bit from the previous meeting that we had because of the Volcom locations. So in summary, the C, uh, C, D, and E, uh, <coughs> as, a, as a roadway engineer, my primary objective when, I, when we design roadways is to avoid and minimize wetlands at all costs. Um, typically, We'll go to environmental agencies and they'll they'll say, well, do you have another alternative that can be you know be less impact? And, and we have to really demonstrate that this is the only alternative that we have if we're going to go into these locations. So it's very difficult to get through environmental agencies, you know, with significant wetland and floodplain impacts, especially if there's another alternative with much less impact. As we said, D&E &E would cross the conservation land. We talked about three to 600 foot long bridges. It's costly and uh, a lengthy permitting process in order to even try to achieve these, these alternatives. Uh, so 
So basically, based on this information, we've essentially kind of eliminated these from further consideration. So we're going to really take a look at A and D now. So alternative A is really uh, the, the alternative with the least amount of impact. Um, there's no wetland areas uh, right in the same location as A, but we do have minimal 100-year floodplain impacts basically at the existing bridge location. So alternative A requires, you know, it goes through the woods along the, the river, so it requires clearing, um, steep grades, in order to go from the low point that's held along A and B to get up the stage road, it's, it's a significant elevation difference. So there's going to be steep grades, probably 10 to 14 percent grades. Uh, basically, because of the rolling terrain, the, the hills, mountainous terrain, there's going to be significant cuts and fills. We got to, there's a couple of utility line crossings that we would have to make, and right at the existing bridge location we probably need a, a retaining wall just to, to build the road and stay out of the river. And again, all, like I said, all these alternatives require property taking partially. Could I ask, when you say takings, does that mean like um, eminent domain, or does that mean that to buy um, it, it, it depends on, typically it depends <laughs> on whether it's adversarial or friendly. You know, if there's a friendly, negotiation, you know, then there would be a fee. But if there's not a friendly negotiation, then there's a good potential for our eminent domain. Mm -hmm. That's typically what it's based on. So here we have pictures of, of the existing bridge. Uh, basically, there's a, some minor repairs. Of, when I say minor, it's still significant. I wouldn't want to pay for them. But <laughs> some repairs are needed for the existing bridge. And, and basically, those repairs repairs are really needed no matter what, what is done, so. Chris, what is that bridge rated for? We didn't get that last time. You didn't get that last time? Mm -hmm. Sean's the expert, but um, from what I've been told, you know, Sean, why don't you, since you, can you uh, explain the rating on this bridge? Sure. It's, it's currently not posted. It was designed for 15 tons. That doesn't mean that's what it carries, but it, it's, it's unposted right now, so it basically carries whatever whatever goes down the road. Right. Thank you. So alternative A, as I said, um, oh, let's just cover the bridge first. So this bridge actually was constructed in, uh, I believe mentioned 1929. It's actually in pretty good condition, but the, it does need some repairs, concrete repair. Uh, the bridge approach railings are not standard railing, and then installing some stone fill near the abutments and some that joint replace, um, replacements. We'll talk about the cost of, of, of these alternatives a little bit after. So. Alternative B is a little bit further south. Uh, you saw the map earlier. Um, based in, and I'll show you more maps uh, with, the, with the resources on them. But this also requires clearing speed grades, significant cuts of fill, utility line crossing, and partial property taking. Um, this is just a picture of where B is located, Green River Road here, and it's not very hard to see, but there's utility lines that are almost at road level that would have to be crossed. There's a significant grade down the slope here, it's probably 25, 30 feet high, so you can imagine building a bridge across the, the river here would, would be uh, require extremely, extremely high bridge and fairly expensive too. So this is the 100 year floodplain. You can see there's a little bit of minor impacts over here. In general, what we've done, done is, is kind of skirt the 100 year floodplain. And we've checked the, the profile through here, which is the vertical grades and some cross sections, made sure that we're not impacting the 100 year floodplain at all. Um, right through here, as I discussed earlier, we, we would have 10 to 14% slopes because of, of how low this area is versus the roadway. Again, uh, as I mentioned, through the floodplain here, we have about, um, you know, it looks like a 200 foot bridge, around 150 foot long bridge, but the elevation is, is probably 30, 35 feet in that area. So 
it would require significant piers to be constructed and he's within the floodplain. Uh, you know, and in order to, for us to get down to grade two, the, the, like I said, very steep grades and a very expensive bridge. Again, this is the floodable soils. The, the, we showed in the previous slides on CD and E that the blue is wetlands and this is just floodable soils. Um, both of these lines stay out of this area. These are agri agricultural soils. Um, this is a hydric soil. It's uh, not really prime or, or state soil, so it would require a little bit of burning, but it, it's somewhat insignificant. Again, the well points. You know, initially, we had the alignment coming down <coughs> on this side, um, so we, we made some modifications to the alignment so that we would stay away from the well point. Alternative B. And you know, as I discussed, this is about, well, I guess it was a 300 foot long, two, two span steel bridge, very high abutments, as I said, difficult site to construct a bridge and, and get the utility process. All right, in summary, A and B, you know, again, I, I mentioned minimizes the floodplain impacts. There's no wetland impacts to these um, that are, are listed on the, uh, at the mapping that Kimberly talked about earlier. No conservation land, and it, all these parcels require partial takings. What well, we estimated the total cost for alignment A is 1.7 million, and the total cost of B is 5.2 million. And basically, that because the bridge is is um, a very expensive bridge. These costs, just in summary, these costs basically include the the roadway, the bridge, um, design engineering, and you know, that would include survey, the, you know, the design itself, bidding once uh, you know once we're done the utility coordination and any of the permitting, and it also includes um, an uh, approximation on the right of way uh, property you take into it. So, yes. You you said the road is going to be 28 feet wide. Yes. Uh, class three road standards are three rod. Three rod. And um, just so you guys so to be clear about this, the right of way or the roadway? Right of way. Yeah, the right of way. Right of way. Yeah, but it's a class three. I mean, it's all like class three roads or three roads. Right, so the, the sorry to jump in, but the, the right of way would be three rod. The road would be narrower, obviously. Yeah. Right. All right, um, basically, we estimated that, you know, some of these projects, based on the, uh, Essentially, the, the right of taking is a significant process according to what we transit down as. But we, we estimate that from concepts all the way through construction is probably three to five years. Okay, at this time, uh, I'm going to let Sean jump in here and talk about the existing bridge location and any other kind of Yes? Good question. Of the 1.7 million, how much of that is maintenance on the existing? 1929 that needs to be done irrespective of the part I don't want to pay. <laughs> yeah, the eight, it's about 85,000. Okay. Okay. Next question. Yeah. Okay, so Chris, Chris threw a lot of information at you. Uh, and what we've had in the background the entire night is the Green River Curve Bridge. So that's sort of what the focus is. Chris talked about alternatives to it. I'm going to talk about alternatives at it. Just a little bit of history. Uh, it, it was built in 1870, listed on the National Register as Town Lattice Trusses, and approximately a little over 100 feet long. The 18 foot 6 wide is, is the bridge width, so the actual roadway width across it is, is much narrower. Uh, obviously, over the Green River, the vertical clearance. It varies a little bit where you measure it, uh, but it's approximately 11 foot six. So it's, it's not very wide. It's not very the opening isn't is very tall either, and it sits on stone masonry abutments and wing walls. So we looked at several alternatives here uh, at the bridge. Six of them. So the first is maintenance repairs only. I'm going to go through these a little bit in detail, but this is the order we're going to go through. 
uh, maintenance repair, upper downstream bridge, various live load capacities, or potentially relocating the bridge altogether. And the theme here is as you go down the list, it gets more expensive and more, takes longer to do. So that's generally where we're headed with it. Maintenance repairs only. This is a project we originally uh, designed for the town. It includes new roof, uh, truss repairs, a little bit of approach work for drainage, uh, railing on the approaches. It's, it's been funded through the Transportation Alternatives Program, and it, it's important to say it doesn't change any of the live load. There's no changes to the live load as part of this. And the estimated construction cost is uh, 315000 So this is sort of what we had planned before the, the study happened. One thought, which has is, is been talked about recently with the repairs to the bridge, is why don't you just bypass it near the bridge? And there's, there's concerns at every corner. And I'm, I'm going to go to a picture here. Um, looking at the bridge, this is obviously not current. This is an older photo. Uh, but, but they are getting close to finishing the, uh, the wall repairs. So we're looking east. And in the northeast corner, there's a, a mill remain. There's, there was an old mill that was there. The foundation's still there. So when we did our work, VTrans came down, cordoned off this area, and said, "Don't you can't impact this area. Here's the, the wing wall on the northwest corner that's being repaired. Obviously, that's something we won't, don't want to impact either. Southeast corner, uh, there's a couple issues. There's a building in the way, a house behind here. Even if you went right through the, the, the garage here, the roads really don't line up. So trying to bypass it to the south, you'd end up here where the roads don't line up. You end up taking this garage, and then you, you, you come down here and you don't even lead into the road. So really bypassing the bridge really locally uh, really isn't a viable option. So now I want to talk about different live load levels. And when we're talking about the live load, that's the, the vehicular load that goes, the weight of the, the car, truck, whatever, that goes through the bridge. When we started the project, it was posted at eight tons. And, and Dick is correct. If VTrans made some recommendations, we worked with them in the town um, to increase that a bit from what was originally recommended. But it has changed to four. So if you have those maintenance repairs, you'd be at four tons. To get to eight tons, uh, a few things we need to do. We need to do a, a detailed analysis. The analysis done by VTrans was, uh, wasn't in, as detailed as it could have been. Uh, but based on our past experience, similar types of bridges, I think eight tons is pretty reasonable. Um, it's, the bridge has carried it for a number of years, really without any distress. Um, there are, in the bottom board, um, you know, some previous damage, but uh, eight, eight tons seems pretty achievable. It's sort of what the bridge wants to be at. So, and when I'm talking about costs, I'm always going to start with the maintenance repairs. Anything we talk about at the covered bridge, you really need to do these as well. Um, that's fixing the roof, fix, doing some repairs, getting the, I didn't mention the racking, but kind of straightening the bridge out. What's the nature of the repairs to get to eight tons? Does that involve steel beams? Like no, no steel beams at that point. Mm -hmm. It would be basically um, where you have two issues on the bridge is in the bottom board. There were some repairs done in 92. Uh, we, we need to look at those a little bit more, maybe do some work in the, it's in the upstream trucks. And also at the end of the bridge, sort of where you run into trouble, all the load comes in at the end. So we might add some sister members, additional pieces there, but it would be fairly uh, unobtrusive. So. Would eight ton, is that like, can fire trucks go over it, can the town trucks go over it at eight ton? No. 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 The one ton. Yeah. yeah, the one ton is ambulance. We'd be able to go over that, uh, but not, not the fire trucks. So the, uh, the estimated, and I, when we're talking, again, with Chris, we want to be apples to apples. We're talking total project costs, it's design, permitting, construction, everything. Uh, and this, this actually, this is the only alternative that doesn't include any right-of-way issues. So you, you have the right-of-way there, the bridge is there. So to get back to the eight tons and do the maintenance, the total is uh, 550000 so as I mentioned, so that's the 315. Yes. The additional funding would be the 550 less the 315. Correct. Right. And is there a time length estimate on it? Uh, we, we didn't put one on that one. Uh, I think we could do the summary. Yeah, the 
Yeah, so we have a summary thing. We do that one. Uh, okay, so we went to eight, and again, why did we look at eight? Well, eight was what it used to be at. So the next limit we looked at was twelve to address some of the, the comments uh, that you made. Was the twelve ones? Uh, this is something the town specifically asked for this this limit of, for us to look at. What's the lifetime of that eight ton? Eight tons? You know, the eight ton improvement. The prior option you discussed. What would be the lifetime of that? Assuming it's, you know, assuming the bridge is maintained, kept dry, clean, and all that, it's, it's generally indefinite. Indefinite. Yeah. Uh, again, it's, it would be either repairing something in the port or adding some members in here. So, <laughs> so 12 tons. Uh, again, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually. It's 100 percent more than what you. It's uh, no, 200 percent more than what you have now, or it, you're adding quite a bit of load to it. It doesn't sound like a lot. So there's there's two ways you can go at it. Uh, one is sort of the approach that was taken down at Dumberston on that bridge was they went to 20 tons, and you go through the bridge and replace everything that doesn't get you to that capacity. So what would that involve? Here you'd be looking at. Um, Replacing the bottom cords, probably not with glue lamp or an engineered material, but replacing the bottom cords, new floor system, uh, and some, some other upgrades to the trusses. So quite a bit of repair uh, or replacement. So you have a, a, and I'm skipping down a little bit. Again, I mentioned last time the D-Trans Covered Bridge Committee. Um, anytime you, you get a, a structure like this, this is on the National Register, so we go through National Historic Preservation Act, Section 106, and they have a say in what the money is used for. Uh, again, if there would be any state or federal money involved. And they may or may not approve this, and I just want to put that out there. We don't know. There's been some changes to the group. We're not sure exactly what they would approve. So to get to the 12 tons, I mentioned you can, you can kind of replace a lot of the bridge, or another option is you add steel beams underneath. And what that would do, involved basically is you lift the bridge up, prepare the abutments, uh, you already have concrete there, you might uh, change the configuration a little bit, put the beams underneath, leave the bridge sort of as it is, and then because we've talked a lot about floodplain, probably sick of floodplain tonight, but uh, in order to not encroach on that, we'd have to raise the whole bridge about two feet and then tie it in on the approaches. So. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but what you would see in this picture is you would see, under here, you'd see about two feet of steel beam below the bridge, and the whole thing would be up about the feet. So if you do all that, you still didn't need to do the maintenance repairs. Those are still recommended. And then the project cost we're looking at here is approximately 1.6 million. Again, that's a, a total cost. This includes this. It includes design, engineering, contingency, all those different costs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how long would that take to be completed? Uh, I'm, I'll do the time to all at once. I get a, <laughs> all right. a slide. It's, it's a good question. Now the steel beams. I think you are, how big they are. I think they're over 30 inches for I beams, right? 30 inch I beams. Yeah, probably. These are massive. 36. Beams. These are not little beams. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'd be looking anywhere from 30 to 36 inches. Right. Beams. And you're saying most of that would show on the two feet. Two, two feet. Two feet. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly some things you could do. Uh, one thing I want to be, just make sure we're clear too, this is a conceptual level. Uh, you know, we, we didn't do detailed structural analysis. We're looking at mapping on a large scale. It's really to kind of, you know, this isn't $50,000, it's, it's a lot more. Try to, you know, more order of magnitude. Same thing with details like that. You could, uh, the other thing to do is replace the siding and put one deeper siding on it and hide it. That's kind of a real, no, I just want to bring up the point. These are massive beams. These are not really yeah, as okay. as people think they are. Would this also include being able to maintain a registry? That's a good question. That is up to these folks. It, I, I believe it would. Yeah. Um, well, it's not actually not up to them. It's up to the uh, State Historic Preservation Officer. But, but it's doable. Yeah, it's doable. 
could get into a lot of it. If we get more questions at the end, we could get into that. There's a well, lot of nuances. Can we have questions? We had said earlier we were going to hold questions till the end, and I, I, I just would appreciate if they yeah. would be able to go through their sure. presentation. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, if there's a clarification, it's not clear, then fine, but otherwise. Okay, so a couple other, again, moving down the list. Uh, 20 ton level, this gets you much, much higher. Uh, now it's, it's similar to the 12, but the, the big change is the, the stone masonry abutments. Um, the abutments are in good condition. Uh, Peter Welch is in the back. He's done some work on, on the, uh, the west end. And so we've seen what the west abutment looks like. However, when you start going to 20 tons, it's not only the weight of the live load, it's now the weight of all the, the beams. You, you mentioned significant beams. So they would have to be investigated a little more, but this option would be talking about replacing the stone abutments with concrete abutments. In this, I think the covered bridge committee would have a problem. I don't think they would want to see uh, the abutments replaced. Again, we're talking about the maintenance repairs. Uh, and this is quite a bit higher. You're talking about picking up the bridge, removing the abutments, <coughs> new, new concrete abutments. We're, we're north of two million, two and a half million. Another option, the last option at the bridge, and then I'm going to do a summary with the times we talked about. Uh, this was an option we were asked to look at. Came up the local concerns meeting, and it's it's depending on your your point of view, it's worth looking at or not. But I think in a study level, it's worth exploring a little bit. So this is relocate the Green River Covered Bridge and put a new bridge in its place. It, it makes sense in the fact that this is where the roads connect and you have a limited bridge. So the idea would be you would, you would remove the bridge and for our for study purposes, we're assuming it goes somewhere in Guilford. We didn't identify anywhere. Uh, you'd still have to do a little bit of repair on it, but less. And you would replace the masonry abutments with concrete raise up the approach and install a modern bridge. So you'd have steel, concrete, something else back here. Um, this bullet here is sort of an understatement that the option has significant regulatory concerns. Uh, it would be very, very difficult and timely. It'd take a lot of, we'll, we'll talk about time, but um, the agencies that would administer this would have a lot of concerns with this. No. I, I think the thought process was that you certainly have to have a conversation with VTrans. Could you move, as long as you use that money to on the bridge, you know, how much would you have to, the idea would be you still fix, you know, fix the bridge, maintain the bridge. So. Okay, so to summarize these and put some times to it, um, the maintenance repairs again, can be done very quickly within the year. They're, they're already designed, they're permitted, they're ready to go. Um, again, moving down the list, things get more expensive. I've already gone over the cost. And, and these are all approximate. You could certainly do these things a little faster, a little slower, but uh, to get to eight tons where you're really not doing a lot extra, probably a couple years for that. Uh, 12 tons, two to three years, three to four years for the 20 ton. And then move it, move the bridge with a new bridge, more like three to five years. So. Are, you, are you saying closure times? Or is this a period of time to completion? Time to completion. Right. So if you pick, you know, if the, if the ultimate, so if you picked one of these options, this is how long it would be before it was done. That, that so it was only that the bridge would be closed in that period of time. Yeah. Right. All. Right. All the options discussed here would require some bridge closure. Yes. All right. So I have I got one I have one last thing. We're going to talk about funding. Just a quick summary, and then we'll we'll open it up to questions. So funding. There is funding available. It depends what alternative you're talking about. It is fairly limited, though. So the Town Highway Bridge Program. Uh, it has a match. It, it's either five to ten percent. With and there's a cap to it. And this, this program, the, the way it works is first starts at the town level, town identifies a project, pick any, in this particular case it would be like alternative uh, B with a new bridge. And that goes up to the regional planning level, 
they look at the, the, uh, the needs of the whole planning area, they prioritize all those projects, those go up to VTRANS, and then VTRANS does the design uh, and ultimately the construction of the project. So these are for larger projects. The issues with, the, with this particular uh, program is that the needs for it exceed, like a lot of programs, there's a lot more need than funding. And so what the, really the goal of the, the program is to um, maintain existing infrastructure, not build new. So this program would potentially be a match for alternative B, the new bridge. However, you'd really have to justify why you need that over um, dealing with existing infrastructure. The other issue with it, uh, from again, for that time frame from Okay, start now, when would it be built? You're looking at five to seven years, so a longer, longer time frame there. Uh, another program, and this would apply to uh, A, is the Town Highway Structures and Class II Roadway Project uh, Program. 10% local match, limited up to 175,000. And this is sort of a, an easier program, if you will. This would be that alternative A, you have the existing bridge, again, Whatever alternative the town picks or doesn't pick, this this work on uh, the work we're talking about on the existing bridge, uh, we, we'd still recommend that happening anyway. So this is a shorter duration for construction, one to three years. There's an application to VTrans, uh, which which funds it or funds it when they can. Uh, the the other thing is again similar to the other program I mentioned, the road for roadways. It's really only open for preservation, not for, for new roads. And the last, last program we identified was the Transportation Alternative Program. This is the one that the town has received some funding for, for the maintenance repairs. Uh, and it's, it's used for historic preservation, rehabilitation. The, the main focus of this program is really for connectivity. It's more associated with, um, with, with trails. Uh, transportation alternatives, alternatives to the regular road and bridge infrastructure. So they look at connectivity, um, we want to do a, you know, take an old rail corridor, railway corridor, turn it into a trail, connect part of downtown to a trail, that sort of thing. But it does have this historic preservation component. Uh, the program has a 20% limited local match, and it's limited to a, a total of 375,000 uh, for the cost. <laughs> so two more summary slides, and then we can go over some of these. So, Chris talked about these alternatives, B, which is the new bridge north of the existing, C, B, and E, uh, not being as viable as some of these alternatives. B is just the cost. It's, you end up with a very large bridge. It's expensive. Um, and it's actually the most expensive alternative we study. C, B, and E, Chris went over the regulatory issues there, um, both from conservation land, floodplain, among others. Alternative A was with the northerly most project, which is that's reuse of the existing bridge, new road, um, with the, is the 1.7 million project costs, three to five year duration, and the advantage is that you wouldn't have higher weight restrictions, and it does give you a second point of access, so when the covered bridge is closed, you have another shorter route around. And the other alternative F, which again, we had basically five sort of viable options. Uh, the project costs vary anywhere from 300,000 to 3 million, uh, depending on what we looked at. Duration again ranges one to five years. The advantages here is you, you have the bridge. There's no land um, acquisition needed. The roads connect there. That's where the, the roads and the bridge want to be. Um, and then there's historic and regulatory approval issues, depending on what alternative you go with. So with that, so again, just that's a, a summary of kind of where we're at. Our role was just to come up with these, look at these alternatives, provide some time and cost to them. And with that, we'll turn it over to if there's any questions or comments. Sure. What are the possibilities of uh, the bridges of the unknown when we started on the wing wall? Problem with the abutment. Is there any chance that when the bridge is finished, that the weight limit can go back up to eight tons as is? Um, 
We never got an answer on why they downgraded it. Sure. So, basically, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to just summarize it, I guess. So basically what happened was, uh, we did the project was maintenance repairs. There really weren't any changes to the, the, to the bridge. Uh, from our perspective, ours being the consultant side, uh, we were just making things better. We straightened out the bridge, put a new roof on it. Uh, we added a little bit of weight to it with this proposed you know, curve inside and fill in between the runners. And you know, we talked about the load capacity several times, maybe bringing it up. But based on our experience, it, these bridges sort of tell you where, where, where they want to be at. Uh, it was posted at 8. I know larger vehicles went over it, but we really weren't seeing a lot of damage. Bridges where you're severely overloading, and you can tell, you, you see the damage. So that was sort of our point of view. VTrans went and did some, some calculations on the bridge. And they came up, and I, I know there was three versions of it. We, we worked back and forth with them. Um, and I think ultimately their number was like five and a half tons, but the, the postings are four, you know, four or eight, so that's where I ended up four. So to answer your question, yes, the wing wall is fixed, but you really haven't changed anything on the bridge per se. But the abutment? Right, but the abutment wasn't the reason they recommended the lower floor. That was basically my question. That was basically, okay. So you're saying just in that one that even though it's posted at four, they only had two ton signs and ten ton signs. They looked at two, so really it's five point. The, the, even though it says four, it's really five point five capability. Yeah, that's that's sort of the number they came up with. Yeah. At, you know, as is. Okay. And our and, and when we went to that eight ton, uh, again, it wasn't a lot of additional cost to get there. Um, you know, specifically what we're saying is there's some repairs to the bottom core to the upstream truss that you should fix or, or deal with. And then at the end, you may add a couple of supplemental pieces, but fairly minor work to get you to the eight tons. I, I, just to reiterate what Dick was saying, we were given basically three pages of math calculations mm -hmm. and then told about the new limit. We were never given an explanation that I'm really aware of, of why it had been downgraded. And so it, then it makes it hard for us, without your help, to address how, how you know, what you, you know, you talked about what it would take to get it back to eight tons. It, it just, um, it, it, it's hard to address something when it was sort of out of nowhere. Yeah, and, and I guess I agree with you. It, it, um, it was posted at eight tons, and they're really, other than state law, which says, you know, for timber structures, you limit it to 16,000 pounds or eight tons, unless there's some other reason. Um, I, I think that's the only reason it was probably posted at eight. No one had really looked at the bridge, be trans consultants anymore, and done an analysis that we knew of. So they, they did one, although as we mentioned, it was sort of limited. So you're right, what you saw was, that was the entire calculations that were done um, for the project. So I think, Yes, yeah, posted it, and I'm trying not to throw too many numbers out and confuse it, but you know they recommend four, but it's closer to five and a half. If you did a more refined analysis, you'd, you'd get probably get a little higher, and then maybe make a couple adjustments. So, Katie, you have. A Didn't point? they identify the deck as the problem and the distribution timber not being used as a problem? No, they they didn't really identify it as a problem. They recommended they be replaced, just on condition they. Uh, we don't actually know how old the deck was. Uh, we know that Wright Construction did the last repairs in 1992. Uh, Brett Wright was, was at the bridge when he had the walkthrough. And what he said was it's, it's a nail laminated deck, so you take two by sixes, they're on edge together, and it had, it had worn basically where the runners are. And so they kind of filled that in and put the runners over. So I think VTrans thought was, well, if you're going to do any type of work on the bridge and close the bridge, then it would be time to look at replacing the deck. So it wasn't really a capacity issue with the deck. It's plenty strong. The floor system is has more capacity than the trusses. The trusses are what's limiting. So your, your estimate of getting to eight tons, is that 
based then on the state's analysis of the weaknesses of the bridge which brought it down to four? I mean, have you reviewed the state's analysis? Yes, we did. We, we oh, worked with this. Yeah. Um, Mr. Short has <coughs> yes. I, I'm looking at those uh, papers right now. They, they, they say uh, no live load force allowed in tension and no bending allowed in core, and the present superstructure has no live load capacity. I guess we're going to get into the details. Uh, <laughs> that was sort of round one. Uh, they, this they, was in May. Yeah. They put that together and... There were three rounds for the DJ. Yeah. Round one is, I think, what you have. And then they refined that and I think got the three. And then... They went from four to zero to three. Yeah. And you never got an four. I think the last one was five. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Why would they go to zero? I can't speak for future yeah. ants. <laughs> 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 That's a really hard question. <laughs> I don't like these questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it was. So, when, when you hit. Let me back up. So, this is a town that was bridge. It was patented in 1820. And there was no calculators, there was no analysis. We didn't really even do structural analysis at that point. So it was it was just done by an engineer. It was done by not even an engineer, it was patented by an architect. Nothing against architects, but it just happens to be. So this particular version of it is a sort a lighter version of that truss. If if you look at the cords, and I don't have a good picture, but the, the top pieces of the horizontal, on the on the very top, there's four of them. And then this is kind of like light piece down below. Normally there's four pieces there. Uh, there's, there's different versions of the truss. So, you know, it was, it was built at a time when we had different vehicles, it wasn't really designed for anything, and no one had done any analysis of it. They took a first shot at it, and yes, you're right, we came up with, with zero, which obviously is, isn't, I think, reasonable necessarily. So then it was refined several more times, and ultimately ended up with a four. But they must have done it structurally, it's so weak. I mean, isn't that why they did it? Because um, they're saying the, the bridge is not as good as it used to be. Uh, I, I don't know the I don't I don't know their thought process. To be honest. Yeah, I can I can just speak to ours. I know with the maintenance repairs, we were looking at you know as far as load capacity improvements. Uh, you have a shingle mm -hmm. roof. We were looking at a standing seam metal roof that would shed snow better. And some other repairs to it. In the way of that, the, uh, the four ton doesn't include the weight of snow potential that could sit on, on the asphalt. Right, that's not specifically addressed in those, those numbers, right? I'm curious to hear from you, but also from you. Know, we've had this rated at eight ton for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if somebody's here from the fire department or not, but you know, that that is a concern you raised that an ambulance would be able to go over to if it were got back to an eight ton rating, a fire truck would not. So um, you know, to date what it's been the method we have used for fire emergency, um, you know, Dan Dan I mean Dan, I know Dan's in Brussels here somewhere, but you know in terms of yeah, yeah, his side is in back somewhere right there. But in terms of if we were able to get it back to eight tons, sort of where we've always been, I just want to know, in my own mind, what would be the, the, the problems with that? Would that be really short-sighted of us to look at that alternative? And I, I'm opening this up to anybody, you know, who's, you know, doing fire protection or Dan, because you've had to work around that bridge wherever you are back there for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we can go through it with the, with the two small one tons, and then we got the, the small purple truck went through last year, which is probably right around when we load maybe eight tons. Mm -hmm. But he makes he has to make two trips through it. So the, the bigger trucks and the greater you know, the greater weighs forty thousand. Right. And even, even the tandem, when you've got everything on you're looking at fifty, six thousand or sixty for pounds. And we've been through it loaded with them, so but I wouldn't want to go through it every day with that much weight. Mm -hmm. And so fire protection 
protection? Is anybody from the fire department what they have done currently? You could get through it with the bright truck and had a pump, but then uh, not that we But you thought it was 12, would you? let's get it back to eight ton. But I would be curious to know if somebody from the fire department specifically, because that's those are the vehicles that can't get through here, could say that would be short sighted, that wouldn't make sense. And that's what you know, that's what if we look at these decisions, how we're gonna weigh what we do. Yeah. I think I think what I could add is it's none of this is easy, right? Or probably wouldn't wouldn't be even talking about it. Uh, at the eight ton limit, I don't believe you would get you'd be able to get the fire trucks through. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> how that fits into the town, that's that's certainly local. The, the brush truck is 500 gallons of water. I think that probably could go through all right, which is a, a small drop of water for house fire, but at least it's something. That's mm -hmm. what they have done in the past, aren't they? No, they just have the big truck the The problem would be uh, mutual aid coming in from Burnison is taken over from Brown Road. Not taken over from Brown Road. When I mean Burnison is taken over from Brown Road, there's a cover truck in that area. And, and uh, the line is the closest department, but it's also one of the smallest. So, uh, but they have a mutual aid set up. But now, because they sound like they can go through with their, their uh, fire and uh, forestry truck with the fire and the water. Right. And, you know, another thing we've done in the past that's the what you post it for is what the you, you hit the nail on the head was that's that's sort of what you want to see on it no more than that on a daily basis you can't look at some higher lows if they're like a fire truck something you don't expect all of them um, you know this you can you can look at that in the analysis too and as you said with the posting day ton when heavier vehicles have gone through your, the bridge did not show signs of heavy, you know, extra heavy usage. It hadn't been damaged by the usage to date before all of this. Right. The, the thing that's hard with the postings is, it's always a little hard to explain, so, but, you know, you, you, you post the bridge for eight tons. If you're eight tons of one pound, it doesn't collapse. There's, there's some safety in there. So you, you can put heavier vehicles on it. You don't recommend it because it, it causes damage. Um, the one we saw that before was a town lattice up in Montgomery. Right. Um, milk trucks were going through it. Right. It was not able to carry that. The, the trunnels were broken. Uh, the wood where the, where the holes went through, you could see they were elongated. You could, you could see signs that it was overloaded. We have, other than, again, what I mentioned, the lower core, we really haven't seen that here. Um, you know, those, those vehicles have gone through and you don't see anything obvious. So like I said, the bridge sort of tells you what it's, what it's capable of carrying. Eight seems to be, you know, be that number. Yes, I know you're, you're you're well with the cost out the alternatives, right? But sort of stepping back and advising us because I think that's behind some of these questions. You have the issue of cost. You have the issue of, of fire, you know, fire safety here across the river. Um, so sort of stepping back, what are the, you know, what do you see as of the options you present? What do you see as the viable, you know, practical alternatives for? That's, that's, I know that's not really your role, but to the extent that you can advise us on, on that, I think it's helpful. No, I think, I think that's our role. I think it's what's, what's viable, what's reasonable. Um, you know, we, we talked about the conservation ones that those, those aren't really viable. We didn't look at those further uh, for a lot of reasons that we talked about. Uh, B, with the new bridge, you're talking a very Hall abutment new bridge, it's very expensive, five million dollars. That doesn't make sense. So then you kind of come down to sort of what we've been left with is, is the options in the north, the A, or, or something at the covered bridge. Now, which one of those makes sense and what permutation at the covered bridge makes sense, that's that's a local decision. But that's of, of everything we looked at, it's sort of those two uh, is what it kind of came down to. But going back to the question, beyond that, looking at just A and the variations on F, do you, you know, if this were your decision to make, you know, do, can you guide us as you look at those alternatives? Do you have a sense of them? Taking B, C, 
D and E off the table? Pick between those two? No, pick between, I mean, there are a lot of variations in that. You know, maintain it at eight tons, you know, bring it up to 12 tons, bring it up to 20 tons, put a new bridge there. Or then A with the alternative around. I, you know, I, I'm just looking for any expertise, guidance from anybody in terms of how you choose between just those. Well, would you have to still spend the 315000 for maintenance for that bridge if you're doing the other one? You would still have to spend that, wouldn't you? Or, yeah. Yeah, so that would be added on top of the, uh, the other the cost of the other. Yeah. You can tag that on the top of that because you'd still have to maintain that. You'd this still have to do the maintenance on this thing. Yeah. This a lot of information, so it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to present. Uh, we were trying to keep all the costs separate so that you, you could see those. Uh, Katie, you wanted to? I was just going to point out that that 315 is already secured with grant money. Right. So it's not money to be raised in taxes where all of the other money contemplated to this would be either money that would have to be applied for or raised in taxes, correct? Correct. Right. So, so again, I'm trying to be clear about it. So the 315000 as, as Katie mentioned, has already been obtained, and the town's portion of that is 60000 60, and some change. So you could almost take that off of the price of the new Yeah, yeah. Again, we're trying to compare apples to apples and leave the funding out a little bit um, of it. But yes, you're right. So when you, when you look at, if you just do the maintenance repair, the town's cost is about a little over 60000 that, that makes sense? Well, no, I was no. so the one point, if you go up to the uh, eight ton, wasn't that one point something? No, no, no that was a 400. That's a 450. Could you put that slide back up that had the F alternatives that we talked about? Yeah. The one that just had the F bridge site alternatives? Yeah. So even if you went to the 12 ton, could you take off that 300? $75,000 that's already been secured by the town? Yeah. Take it off of I mean, it's, it's in funding. It's in funding. Right. So you would take it off of that at one point. As far as what's out of pocket for the town, yeah, you could do it. You could look at it that way. So yeah, we don't lose 
lose, we don't lose the abutment until we do the work that's already been done until we get to 20. Right. Right. That's where you went to the big concrete uh, yeah. abutment. Yeah, yeah the, the, wing, the wing wall part, the, the long part, that's basically would be in all these options. And then you're right, the abutment changes at that point. Uh, okay. uh, you know, you're looking at stone abutments, you know, now we know how wide they are, but it's, you know, dry lane stone abutments. Um, and again, it's 20 tons live load, it's the weight of the bridge, it's the weight of snow, it's the weight of the steel beams. It's a, it's a lot of, you know, it is it's stone, but it's a lot of weight, so. Um, I'd say couldn't keep it, it's just we, that's where we start getting uncomfortable with it. I don't understand one thing, and that is uh, the three pages that she mentioned of statistics of numbers, calculations, which you didn't understand and nobody understands. I'm wondering, did you review those to reach your <coughs> estimate of the work to be done to the eight ton live load, to get back to eight tons? In other words, they took us down from eight tons to some calculation, which no one understands. Have you Somebody understood that calculation? And that's the basis for your estimate for eight tons? Um, I'm going to break your question, I guess, into two parts. Yeah. So the, the calculations they did, they, we understood them, yes. Oh, okay. And we commented on them, and we had some, and they did make some changes. D-Trans made some changes, okay. and that got us back to basically the four. They didn't specifically say, again, it's three pages, so uh, they didn't specifically say fix this, fix that. The, the repairs are solely based on, on our opinions, not... Because they didn't say in the calculations it's it's three tons because of this this and this. They said hmm. it's it's just just the capacity. Hmm. <coughs> just for clarification, please. Um, was it the eight ton or the twelve ton that um, included a new approach from the west and a shorter access of while the bridge is being repaired? Was it the two year span or the two to three year span? Somehow you were gonna. I, I was wondering where that. Shorter span, where that shorter uh, access was going to be, to get, rather than have to detour all the way down to Leiden or up to Halifax. Did you not? Did I misunderstand? I think so. I'm not I'm not following what you. Please tell me. I think that because you put the road in first, you put the long road in. You just said. Option you just said that you had a way around. You had to access oh, points temporary. over the. You know, if if you had to repair the bridge and you did group A, you would have that in place. But, but that's a yeah. it's expensive. That's a three to five. Right, right, the road was the A road was option A would years? take two years to a uh, point of completion. Option A was three to five years. Yeah. Three, three to five, five years. years. And that so, I mean, it's all through the training. With an eight ton bridge. We're still looking at a closure with long detours, mm -hmm. and we're still looking at no emergency equipment available to us. No, you have a four ton bridge. Good option. Option A. You wouldn't just, you know, you'd be able to get the bridge up to four tons with the cover bridge. And the bridge is already. But that doesn't allow, that doesn't allow ambulance, right? Well, it's not the four ton. Not the four ton. So I, I, I think the answer to your question is the statement I made was. That alternative A at the north, if that was in, if that was in place, which would again take we're estimating three to five years, at that point you have two crossings pretty close, and you could close the covered bridge down and do the do the repairs. Then that's all I was saying. Um, Did you guys look into anything for temporary um, bridges? And have to go through all that committee process and so on. If they get a temporary bridge where everybody can get across while they were working on. If we had, did a temporary bridge, if, if, well, for example, in the existing location, we would still have to account for the floodplain impacts and the wetland impacts. And then we would also, um, because they charge you for the impacts to put it in and then take it back out again. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a hair different calculations, but it's still um, mostly the same. And as Sean pointed out, I think there was one slide. If you just look at the four corners, each of those corners has challenges. 
in terms of how you would tie a temporary bridge in um, the northwest corner with that um, the remnants of the mill. Uh, would, I, I mean, I would, I don't know, I'm guessing 75% would be off limits. They would, they would be very unhappy for us to affect that parcel. So then you're looking at the south where you've got the owner with the garage and then you've also got bridge geometry issues on that side as well. So it would be very challenging to put a temporary structure in here. Challenging and costly. So as uh, residents that live on the other side of the bridge, we should count the next year, we definitely will have to go all the way around. It's, so there, there will not be a bridge in place next year. And we'll have to do this again. Can, can you just clarify the time frames that the two years or the two to three years doesn't mean closure, it means for the entire process. So for example, if it was an eight ton project that we were trying to get to, the closure would perhaps be how many weeks of the two years? Uh, what would, okay, so the question of the two years, what would the closure time be? Yeah, when it actually goes to construction, what would the closure period be for the eight ton project? Uh, two months or less than that, no. that eight month? I, I guess, yeah. Okay. Not two years. Yeah. Yeah. Much different answer. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So the, the slide sometimes isn't clear. The, the question we got last time when we came to local concerns meeting was, how long are these projects going to take to do? And when I when I you asked the question earlier, that's the total time span. So, the, the closure varies on all these. If you go to twelve or twenty tons, the closure is different. The closure is more like four, five months, somewhere in that order. It, it varies in there. I guess the point we're trying to make is if you, you, you pick any of these, it's not going to be like tomorrow. It, it takes some time. And we're, I know that was a question we were asking. You're talking start to finish. Well, these are start to finish. Design and everything. Yeah. 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 Design. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the other, just to add on to the temporary thing, I think, I think it's fair to say the the permitting agencies really don't look at whether it's permanent or, or new. They don't really treat them any differently, unless it's an emergency. Um, you know, there's there's cases of other towns they put in temporary bridges that they've been there 15 years. You know, so they they look at it sort of that way. Yes, sir. If, if you did, uh, let's say that the final goal was to go to eight ton line road, uh, would you do the maintenance repairs? at the same time that you did all the eight ton work or could you do the maintenance repairs independently initially? Uh, in other words, I was wondering like in the maybe next summer, could you put the maintenance repairs and then the following summer do the work to get it up eight tons or would you do everything together? Um, that's up to the town. I, I think it would make sense to do it all at once. Um, and then that be next summer? I mean, it, it took, that's what I was kind of curious about the timeline uh, description. Two years, which means that probably would not be done next summer. And then uh, that would also mean that the maintenance repairs might not be done. Sure. Uh, so the maintenance repairs could be done next year. The funding's in place, everything's there. As far as going up to that next limit, I guess the thought process is you, you, you want to hire the contractors working there. Is, if you're going to close the bridge and inconvenience a lot of people, it's probably keep it short and do it once is sort of our thought. And the other issue is with the funding. Uh, transportation alternative, uh, if, if you do receive, if you went for and applied for more money to get you to the eight tons, you don't hear about that. They don't award it till around Christmas. So now you have a very short period to go through. Uh, get everything designed, get it approved and reviewed, and then put it out to bid. Um, it would be very tough. The process is slow. Um, so that would mean that the Ford limit would be pretty much guaranteed for one year, then the work would be done, and then at the end of that year, it would be up to eight. Yeah. 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 In that, in that scenario, yes. Uh, I mean, it, it could be... <coughs> Possible to maybe get eight time next year, but it'd be really hard. I think it's the more the more you compress time schedules, and the more, you, particularly on the contractor side, the more costs go up. In most 
most of the contractors you want working on this bridge are smaller contractors, so you can't really just say, well, I'll just put another crew on it. They don't have another crew. They're, they tend to be small, you know, smaller firms. Um, that's fair as far as the process goes, right? It takes, takes time. Yeah. Yes, sir. So eight tons, which is two years into a three to five bypass, uh, option A. Right. And if you're thinking of times in the future, eight tons um, is also going to be without improvement that would be substantial enough that it wouldn't require uh, a, a, a shutdown again in the very near future. In fact, at eight tons, uh, two years down the road, it'd be seven years down the road before it'd be shut down again for a major improvement of maintenance. By that point, a bypass would be available or could be available <coughs> on option A <coughs> so that it doesn't inconvenience anyone and emergency vehicles would be readily available all the time. Uh, correct? Yeah, that's, that is a, a, an, L, an option, sure. The other option is to uh, maybe build a building over there to house a fire truck. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, that's another option. Right. Yeah, the, the, the main the main items that are have you know that can't use the bridge are either related to the, you know the fire department or the, or the road uh, the road. So yeah, that's certainly an option to duplicate the fire. of having option A be only for emergency vehicles? Is that, or by the time you do that, you might as well have everybody drive over? In other words, in some cases, if we kept the bridge at four tons but had an emergency route to the west side uh, using option A, is there any, would that cut down on the 1.7 million for A, or can't you do it that way? 
Um, yeah, I mean that's. I guess that's certainly an option. It's. It'd be a decision of the town, but I suppose what you could do is put a, a narrow road in, uh, with, with gates and bars at the end, you know, with only with the access uh, for emergency <coughs> vehicles. Because conceivably, at four turns, you would have, you would have a, well, and especially if it's really five, five turns, you would have a bridge that would take most, most vehicles, vehicular travel, including some bigger pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. But then anything that had to go around it would be used by the town and by emergency uh, resources to just use that road to get there. But it would obviously have to be plowed and things, so. So Sean, you're saying that if it were only for emergency vehicles, the standards would change? You know, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um, we're good at the front. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you were only gonna have one directional traffic, you know, saying, okay, you get five trucks, so you could probably narrow off the roadway. But there's still a significant cost, uh, you know, clearing the fill that would be required, uh, you know, the, the, the gravel, the crushed gravel that goes into it. Uh, there's probably, there's, I'm assuming there's some rock excavation. It, the cost will still be significant. It's not gonna, you're not gonna say, you know, it's not gonna be a $200,000 roadway to, in order to do it. You know, we have 1.7, it's gonna end up being, you know, Possibly 1.5 or 1.4. You know, we're talking. It's not a huge savings by having a wider road, you know, a narrow, that much narrower of a road. You're not saving half the cost by. So that what happens. It's, the, it's that it can be narrower. That's what the change is. Right. It would be for me. Yes. The right of way would be the same. You still have to purchase the same amount of land. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Essentially, you would purchase the same amount of land, especially if you want to. Consider improving it in the future for oh, foot yeah. traffic. Look at state aid. A state aid for class three roads. You can't right. build a trail up through there. You state aid on it. Right. So yeah, you're still looking at the same. Yeah, your fixed costs are there, whether it's ten feet wide or twenty. The, the things Chris said it much better than me, but it, I think that's the, you have a lot of fixed costs um, there, no matter what you know the design, the survey, and a lot of that depending on doesn't matter how wide it is. Most likely to happen from a select board meeting 
schedule and make it because if, if I understand it correctly, there's some some urgency to get the funding for the maintenance and repairs and other things. A, a, uh, not a warrant, but a uh, grant that grant. needs to go in. Right. And so I you have to have make time. We still have time to get that in to make a decision on the time we pay. Right. And hopefully, if you do that Tuesday morning, next Tuesday morning. Okay. So you just hit on something that. So what you're saying is that there's a possibility that the select board will meet next uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, morning, October 14th at 8:30 in the morning yes. to make this decision. No, that is our meeting, and that's what we said. Yeah. That's that's the meeting date. Yeah. Right. Our next meeting date because Monday evening is Columbus Day. No, I understand. Yeah. But it's possible that this decision Maybe could be yeah. made. This recommendation, decision, whatever that the select board would take, might be made at that Tuesday morning meeting. Yes. And do you think that's the best time to have that meeting for people who want to attend and watch that process? Where do you draw the line? You draw the line at, at if it's calm to stay, make it Tuesday night. Make it Wednesday night. Here, here's, I, I'll take responsibility. The way before any of this came up, um, I, uh, we had made this decision that we would not meet on Columbus Day, Veterans Day, those Monday nights. I have to be out of town for work Tuesday through Thursday. So again, before any of this came up, I said, can we meet Tuesday morning so I can attend the meeting before I have to leave town? I won't be back till Friday. Um, because of that, you know, my inclination would be to want to put the decision off until the next select board meeting. However, there is the time sensitivity in terms of grant applications. So that's the rub. And it's, uh, I, I, it's partly my fault. It, I mean, it's not my fault. It's that was how that decision was made. Okay, so I have a question. A big decision for Dan, life. I have a question for you. you Columbus Day is not a holiday here in Vermont. So mm -hmm. why can't you meet Monday night? Columbus Day is a holiday. It's a federal holiday. Federal holiday, but there's no school. There's no school. There used to always be school on Columbus Day. There still is. No, there's not. Did you consider an earlier meeting when Steve asked the same question? You said the town would vote on it. No, no, no. The town would vote on the money. Oh, so it's the money. Vote on the money, not on the option. No. So we're into the following Monday. It's too late. The next. The next scheduled meeting would be the 28th, 7th, 7th, 27th. Um, and Katie, you know about the cycle, you, Sean mentioned it, in terms of grant deadlines for applications for transportation enhancement money. It's 19. what, November 1st or 19th. October 19th? 16th. 16th. Next or Thursday. Or it would be next year. About yeah, the same year around every year. So you make a decision next Tuesday morning, and you process that. You make a decision next Tuesday morning, and then you process that information. The thing more to do by the 16th. Well, this and then they just ask us for the money. It, no, it gets back to what Sean said, though. I, I mean, I want to just point out. You had said, let's just say that we were able to get this grant application in. And let's just say that we've got the grant awarded. My understanding was it is still a very tight timetable to then, if we got the grant awarded in at Christmas or January, to put together um, construction for the summer of 2015. And that's why you would said two years, correct? Right, that's fair. Yeah. The, the general process, uh, they notify. V-Trans will notify, generally, sometimes it's January, generally it's December, mm -hmm. just before Christmas. And then they, have, they send the town an agreement, the town has to review and go over the agreement. Uh, then you have to have your match, you know, it's 20% of whatever it was applied for. So that money needs to, you know, the town meeting or however it's raised, there's time for that. And then you have to do the design and go forward from there. So I guess what I'm arguing, uh, even though this is not a select board meeting, is that I think our chances of getting a transportation enhancement grant written in a day and a half and submitted, mm -hmm. let's say that by a miracle that was able to happen, even then I'm not sure we would be able to have everything in place to do the work in the summer of 2015 so that 
in my mind, takes away a little of the immediacy, except if we have to wait a whole mm -hmm. other year, then we're in the same boat for the summer of 2016, right? Can you say that? Like, if we, if we didn't get a grant application in by October 16, 2014, mm -hmm. but we got it in the next year, would we be looking then at not being able to go to construction? Or put another year on it. That would be? Unless you could try and achieve And that's a different timetable. Yeah. So either way, the source of funding to deal with. their their timetable for grant um, announcements makes it hard for you to unless you did your um, construction like in September October. Even that. Yeah. Even even that is an issue. But the bridge will be usable in that. Yeah. 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 Or pick up Would there be any downside to not doing the maintenance until 2016? Uh, in general, sooner is better, but it's not, not that critical. I think the, the, the part of it that needs to be monitored is the racking at the end. And I know there's, yeah, there's, there's some sweep to it, but it's, the racking kind of leads the way. Um, so, you know, there's there's a spot in the bridge to, to, to measure that. So if that's monitored and doesn't appreciably get worse, then no, it wouldn't be a problem. Is there a sun? What's the sunset or the deadline for spending? Oh, so the deadline for spending that three um, three fifteen is not ready. I mean, and so to hear what you're saying, if if the maintenance were put off, you're you know, yes, it'd be better to do it sooner rather than later, but it's not critical. Right. I, I think what we would recommend uh, is to monitor the racking on the end. Uh, there's a nail in place, it's been measured, and we know what it is. Um, you know, keep an eye on it. If it does get worse, you could sort of then maybe, maybe put the maintenance up next year. Assuming it doesn't change appreciably, then yes, you could wait, wait till the 2016. Okay, do you think there's a danger in waiting that we won't get the run? Is there any more advantage to getting it in now in three days than a year from now? Um. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is this. Is no, and I think, uh, I, I don't know if I don't, I don't know if I can answer that. I don't know how things should be. Um, personally, me, Until minimally the summer of 2016. I mean, I'm 
have used four ton limit. It doesn't bother me a bit. I don't go across the bridge much. No, not. But my point is just that if if this is a big decision that we need to make, and we're not, we're, we can't fix it until earliest case scenario is 2016. No, no decision made. We can't do anything. I understand, but I'm just I. Now, if you want, we can. Like I said earlier, we can put it to a town meeting and say, what do you want to do? I would rather just, first of all, we've heard, had a lot of material here tonight. I'd rather have a couple weeks to digest it and look at it at our next regularly evening scheduled meeting. That would be my choice. Yeah. Can, can I ask, uh, you had mentioned the, uh, the racking. So right. it's, it's uh, the, the north or on the eastern entrance, the north wall is about seven inches out of plumb at this point. Um, and I was wondering if it's if it is, then at what point does it become like most we should do something? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if the number's seven right now. I um, think it's seven. Well, it, I checked it with from uh, the Minister of Works in uh, 2010, but then I checked it um, the next year. It's kind of a it's kind of a judgment call, really. Um, you look at you look at the history of it, and if it's if it's moving or not, accelerating or not, and, and, and kind of deal with it then. Um, I don't I don't think it's a definitive number. You get to X, and you, you deal with it. So it's kind of a judgment call. Could, could the select board put out a proposed decision and then float it through the town and see what kind of response to
Disagree. Did you realize that's Monday Night Football? You've gotten that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what, that's what, I mean. Don't worry, the Pats aren't going to be in it. Either. So that's what, that would be my preference, to do it at that point. I feel better about having heard about the timeline for the grant application. It seems to me like that should not be driving a snap decision because it doesn't make any sense to me to quickly decide so we can we can even write a grant and Dave have to as you said it's it's not well enough to find. So that takes that pressure off and I'd like to just wait and make but make the decision to answer your question, Michael, um, on the twenty seventh. Monday, the next regularly scheduled evening meeting. And as I said, I apologize that next week I'm not around the meetings. We had a citizens group picnic meeting yesterday or on yeah, Sunday, and there were 38 people there or whatever. Um, I would echo that recommendation simply because of the of the transparency that would be the in <coughs> transparency that would be perceived by a people <coughs> decision making. So I mean for the sake of another two weeks of Katie doesn't think it's it's critical. I think you would do yourselves a big favor by taking your recommendation into consideration. And I can't speak for everybody, but I think that was the general tone of most of the West Side. Uh, okay. <coughs>